Hey everybody, Off Grid Ping here. So while I was doing another pallet build today, I was actually working on what is gonna be for now a dog house and then hopefully in the future a goat house for when I get some goats. Um, and it was it was mainly all pallets, but of course, you know, I needed some two by fours and stuff to be able to affix all the pallets to one another. And uh, I ran out, so since I ran out, what I did was I decided, well, I'll just go ahead and mill my own. So I, uh, this video is going to be, you're going to see me cut down a tree, then I'm going to um, mill the wood, and then I'm going to rip a couple of 2 by 4s That way I will have them and I can get back to work on the dog goat house. All right. Um, so, as always, if you like this video, please like, please share, please subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And uh, with that being said, let's get to it. All right, so since we're going to go cut down, or I guess as it's called, fell a tree, and then mill some wood, let's go over the tools that I use before we go down there. All right, so, got a tape measure, a hammer, we got my chainsaw key wedges of course the chainsaw chainsaw gas chainsaw oil got an axe just in case then one of these handy dandy amazing tools a hookaroon this thing is amazing for helping to roll logs or to carry smaller ones or whatever of course you got your helmet with the face shield and what do you got those earmuffs then i got my Grandberg Alaskan Chainsaw Mill, and then of course my gloves. And then um, when we get down there, I'll show you the rail guides because uh, they're still in the woods. So let's go on down there. All right, so this is how I get my tools down to where I'm going. I'll pull it in this handy cart. Sometimes when I'm going further, I will uh, hook this up to my lawnmower. I have a zero turn lawnmower that can pull this do not have a four-wheeler unfortunately otherwise I'd be able to uh, pull my logs up to where I do all the um, ripping for the boards and I could mill them there but since I don't have anything strong enough to pull my uh, logs I have to mill them right where they fall so we'll get down in there we'll get this set up and then we'll get going all right so this is the tree that I will be felling today. And I don't know if you can tell, but since it kind of has a lean that way a little bit, I'm just gonna go ahead and go with it. And hopefully, if I can get it to fall right, it'll fall like right in that section right there. I hope so. Let's see what I can do. Here we go.
Well, as you can see, it didn't quite uh, fall all the way down. It fell a little bit to the right where I wanted it to. So it got hung up in those trees up there. Not the first time I've had this happen, but I'll be able to fix it. I'll be able to get it down. Then before I'll do it again. I will forgot to turn the camera on again, but she's down. So there we go. Now what we can do is We'll get into how I mill. All right, so now that it's down, we're gonna go ahead and cut it to the length that I need. So I'm gonna trim this side over here, and then I'm gonna cut it six and a half foot, because that's what I need uh, for the top piece of what's gonna be the dog slash goat house. And it'll actually work too for the uh, kitchen, because that way it'll give me some wiggle room because um, I only need about a little bit over six foot for those so I'll have a few extra inches. All right, let's get to it. All right, so since where this tree fell is not level at all, I'm gonna have to move the log down there. See how you can see where all that sawdust already is. That's where I've already done some milling and it's a lot more level down there. So that's what we're gonna do.
So since I don't have any sawhorses set up down here or anywhere for that matter, what I'm gonna do is use these two logs that I've cut little notches in. All right, and you'll see that this one's smaller than that one. I have other ones, different sizes. It just depends on the log, especially since this was the bottom of the tree. This, uh, the bottom where it was, you know, going into the ground or close to the ground is always going to be fatter than the rest of the tree. As it, of course, as it grows, it gets thinner. And we're on a slightly downhill slope here. So I'm going to go ahead and put the big one on this side and the little one on this side. And then we'll get to it. All right, so there she is. Now typically, well, I guess in the beginning, I used to uh, debark the trees because it is so much easier on your chain as this bark will dull the tree, or I'm sorry, will dull the blade much faster than just the wood will. So I guess it really depends because I used to have a bigger knife that I used and uh, actually snapped the blade doing one of the trees. So really depending on how easy it is to get this off will depend on whether or not I debark it. So let's see. All right, so yeah, it's, it's not coming off in sheets like I would typically like. It's just kind of ripping and still leaving some of the uh, inner part of the bark on there. So you know what? I'm just going to do what I do. Thank goodness that I have a really awesome chainsaw sharpener. So um, that's good. And I have like seven chains. Not that that really matters. I mean, you still, you, I'm using them up faster than I should. But whatever. I'm going to go ahead and get the rails on here and then we'll get to milling all right so i got my rail here and then the way this works is it's got adjustable screws right here some of these i've had to replace because um this is a cheaper one off amazon i think i only paid like 100 bucks total for this whole thing so over the course of what the nine months that I've been using this um, sometimes when you're sawing this will vibrate a little bit and then by the time you're done sawing you turn around and look and one of the bolts is missing or one of these things has fell off you can probably I don't know if you can see that I got sticks holding it together but you know hey you gotta do what you gotta do and then uh, like these bolts I actually had these bolts so thankfully they fit the exact thread pattern of the weird little straight no head bolts that they had on here so what I always typically do first is I'll go all the way out and then let's see because right now it's on the inner two which you can go on the outer two for bigger trees this one I mean it's big on the one side but it's kind of small on this other side so I might just leave them on those inner ones for now let's see what happens when I put it on here right there all right so all right so we'll get it situated and then what we'll do is now the best thing that you could probably do well if you had level ground would be to use a level to make sure that this thing is perfectly straight well I don't do it that way I haven't been doing it that way since I started um, you know, sometimes it, it messes up a little bit, but for the most part it works out. I just kind of eyeball it and I go for it. You know, hey, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, like I said. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so let me see here from this side. All right, so looking at it, it looks like this side still needs to come up a little bit, which of course it should, 
because it's much smaller than that side even with it being on that bigger log and it's going slightly downhill like I said but it, you can see the bar from my angle anyway you see the bar kind of goes down some. so we're gonna lift this side up a little bit I mean, look at it from over here too Yeah, it looks pretty straight that way. This back corner looks like it needs to come up a little bit. So. Oh, which it has to come up anyways, because this screw is sticking up above that, so that won't work. All right, so now it's not, okay. So, since I did that, let me check the front again. <sighs> yeah, the front needs to come up a little more again. And now these are up some, so we'll just screw them down just so they touch the, the top of the tree there. That way it stays level. Alright, so now that I got it as level as my eyeball says it is, we're going to take our hammer, we're going to hit these in. Oh look, that one just fell off, just like I was talking about, how they like to fall off all the time. Good times. So, we find another handy dandy stick. Look at there. Boom, back in business. All right, then once we get them hammered in, we'll just kind of turn each one a little bit just to make sure they're nice and tight on there. That way it doesn't bounce as we are sawing. All right. All right, so when I mill, I actually use a different chain than what I do when I'm cutting. Um, I use what's called a ripper chain for milling versus your regular standard chain. Um, I'll take this one off and then I will uh, show you the difference between the two. So let me do that real quick. All right, so I don't know if you can see that. Let me see, I gotta get back here so I can show it to you. Let me get it this, well, I don't know. It's got all that weird, oh, there you go. See, I don't know if you can see, see how that's kind of rounded, that edge there? I don't know if you can tell, let's see on this one, see how it's a lot harder, more defined edge there. So it's a more aggressive cut all right so let's put this guy on hey about to mill a log what are you doing, I'm doing my you're done doing your video yeah. is it a cool video yeah, what'd you video about? It was a 
about cutting trees? Did you cut some trees? Yeah. What'd you cut trees with? Like, with your ninja hand? Mm -hmm. Did you ninja chop the tree? Yeah. Yeah. It's always sweet. Yeah. What? I want to use a kind of big different tree. A bigger tree? What? I just cut this tree. I don't like it. Why not? What's wrong with it? It's the Did it call you names? Yeah. What what did it say? It say don't like you. The tree said that? Yes. What? That's crazy. It said I want you to leave me alone. Ah. Shouldn't have done it on there. Okay, so are you still cleaning the video? Yep. I can see it. Oh crap. I can't see that. Because it's right there. Oh. At least he can't see us. He can see us. You gonna wave to him? Say hello, what's up? Yeah. Alright. I made my video down here. But I probably I'm gonna make another video now. Because I'm gonna Bag down here in my if I enjoy. All right, so now that the ripper chain is on, we are going to put the mill on. Oops. So what you do is you line it up on the bar here, and it's got these two bolts that will tighten it to the bar. So we're gonna go ahead and do that part here. Let me move over here so you can see what's going on. And the good thing about it is your uh, chainsaw chuck key works for uh, this as well. That's all you need. And then when you're doing this, you'll want to make sure, because see, it can get cockeyed sometimes, so you want to make sure you are in the middle there, where you're getting a straight cut. And then once you get it tightened down, I'll alternate back and forth to make sure it's tight. And then as your bar gets older, as you do this a lot, you will make dents in this. And then sometimes you'll notice your bar gets crooked like this. If that happens, what I've actually done is I flipped it over and I use the other side, but I'm getting to the point now to where I'm, I, can, I keep moving up. So if I'm gonna cut bigger trees, I won't be able to. So I'm gonna have to get me a new bar soon. Just part of the game. All right, so now that that's on there, let me get my tape measure. So we'll measure how far the first cut has to be. Uh, it's about four and a quarter. Four and a half. Four and a half. Four and a half. I'm probably gonna go about four and three quarters on the first cut just to be safe. So then how we do that is that's these two right here on the front and then there are notches and marks on here. So what we do is we're gonna loosen these. All right, and then I'm gonna go to four and three quarters Right about there. And then we're gonna tighten it down. All right, 
And just to make sure I measured properly, let's line it up and see before we get to cutting. Doesn't look too bad. Huh? That's all right. Alright, so now that the first cut is done, we won't need the rail guide anymore. All we need are these two rails that are on here. So, what we're going to do now, hey Sarah, is we're going to move this down to the height we want. So since I was needing a 2x4 for the um, dog slash goat house, you know, the one, last one I used is, is, you know, the traditional one and a half inch, not a real two by four. So I'll probably make this a little bit more than that, maybe like one and three quarter inch because this will shrink since this is green wood. So it'll shrink down. Um, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger to start. That way, once it shrinks, we're good. All right, so let's do that. Go ahead and check our gas and oil. I typically do it after every cut. Now on a cut like that, since my 
Blade isn't brand new. It's six and a half foot. Took a little bit less than a half a tank of gas. So we'll fill that up. All right. And then it's usually about, from my knowledge, it's about two to one on the um, gas to oil. So I'm probably about a quarter empty on that. Yeah, looks like it. But we'll fill it up anyways. I always top it off every time when I'm doing the gas. Well, I say every time. Sometimes I do it every other time. But you know, whatever. All right. Let's cut our first slab. There's slab number one. So there it is. In all its glory. All right. So now comes the fun part where I get to carry it all the way up to where I rip boards at. So let's do that. You're going to help, right? All right, I got it.
right, so usually when I take all my stuff all the way down there to mill, I would mill more boards than just one. But I kind of want to get back to building the dog slash goat house and it'll give me the opportunity to show y'all how I rip my boards. And for that, I went ahead and I switched back to the regular chain versus the ripper chain. It's funny that I'm ripping boards, but I'm not using the ripper chain, but that's beside the point. Uh, so this is the regular chain that I'll be using for that. All right, so. Now on this, typically if I were going to be uh, ripping boards that I was gonna use for like um, framing or something, I would use this, this side because it, um, it tapers bigger to the other side. That way I don't get any bark when I cut it. But since I wanna to try to get two, uh, two by fours out of here, I'm gonna flip it over. Cause if there's a little bark, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I'm using it for a pallet dog slash goat house. Anyways, so we'll put this down here and then we'll take these handy dandy log dogs. These things are amazing. Uh, like I said uh, in an earlier, but I don't know if you saw it. Maybe I didn't say it. But anyways, I searched all over for these guys. Because the guy that I watched um, and learned how to do this from, he had these. And I searched all over for them. And uh, I did the same thing he did. I ended up making them. So I took a, a metal cutoff wheel and some steel. And I just cut these out. These things are worth their weight in gold, basically. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and we're gonna put them right here like this. See now it's nice and sturdy on there. All right, so now usually what I would do for this is um, I'll go ahead and I'll make my first cut and then I'll measure the other side to make sure that it's nice and straight. Or what I'll do too is I'll take and I'll measure both of these sides. So let's see here, this one. We're at about nine and a quarter inches. So halfway would be four and an eighth. Is that right? I'm sorry, it was nine and a quarter, so that would be four and um, what, six eighths? So, not one eighth. All right, so then we'll go to the other side. We'll measure this side. This one is 12, so the middle is six. So now what I'll do is I'll measure from the middle of this guy over. Make sure I had that right again. Yep. Okay, wait a minute. Right about there. All right, so I'll measure from this guy over. And we're about four and a quarter is about as far out as I can go. So since I went four and a quarter there, I will do the same thing on this side. So you'll see a big difference. So there's gonna be this much, but then you'll see how it tapers over. So let's see. And actually, with it being that tapered like that, I could probably go over a little further on this side, and I think I will. So we've got our chalk line. Make sure I can get two out of this now. Oof, I cut it just right. Well, I'm gonna have to cut this a little unorthodox because typically when I cut it, I'll stay on the inside of the line. So since I wanna make sure I get every inch that I can, I'm gonna cut it backwards. I'm gonna cut this way instead of this way 
So in order for me to do that, I actually have to stand on top of this to do that. So let's switch. All right, so like I said, this is not traditionally how I would do this. Usually I would cut from this side where I could stand on the ground where it's much safer. Um, however, since my bar is a quarter of an inch thick or about what it cuts when I cut it, if I go on the outside of this edge this way, it'll give me an extra quarter of an inch to play with. So that's what I'm gonna do. number one so now we'll measure our four inches over to where we're gonna make our next cut Too many lines. Oh, it's going to be close. Yeah, we might lose some of it in the middle here. So I can tell. I don't think I got four inches on that side. Oh, it's real close. That'll be interesting. But we'll have one real nice board. I can see there is still some bark right here. But doesn't really matter. Hmm, for some reason that looks wider. Let me see. Yeah, we're a little bit over four. What did I do here? Huh, let me do that again. Measure twice, cut once. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? I don't typically do that, but you know, whatever. I'll do it this time since you guys are watching. Yeah, I got a little wonky down at that end. Huh. All right, you ready to switch again? You go on that side.
anyone to help me generally. So to keep this, because what'll happen is the weight from this, when you cut it, it'll rip the back end unless you got something to support it. So I got these handy dandy little pieces of wood down here. And I put just like this. And that will help support them just enough that it won't rip the wood. So there it is. It looks like it's thicker than one and three quarter inch, but hey, there's our first board. Now, see if we can get another one out of this guy. have to do my unorthodox style so we might have to switch sides again. a whole section in this middle here where we lose our four inches. I totally go off. But that's all right. We'll make it work. All right. You guys ready to swap sides? So you're not looking at my back? All right. So. As it, I would not recommend doing this type of cut if you're just starting off and it took me a while to get the, enough finesse to where I could kind of go along the edge and then start back up again so if your boards aren't wide enough to get to I really wouldn't recommend it um, it's a lot easier just to do the one cut down the middle and fortunately you lose the outsides but it is what it is or you use ones that if you can't get more than one two by four out of them use them for the planks that are going to go on the on the uh, sides of the building. That way you don't uh, waste as much. So, let's go ahead and do this. Bark on this one, but like I said, 
I'll get that off and it's just gonna go for support on the inside of that house. So doesn't really matter. I mean, it's made out of pallets anyway, so who cares? Just a little something something. All right, well that's milling and ripping boards. Hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you next time.